What about uh, the biggest uh, issue for security in Yemen being a, an internal uh, access, meaning that what we've had in some of the refineries, for example, in Marib, where it, the access it. has been an inside job yes. uh, to it, where, you know, how can, can Yemen secure this, this kind of facility? Very good question. Uh, facility? Uh, one of the most important concepts of nuclear security, there's a science, mm -hmm. there's a craft, there's a trade, professionalism called nuclear security and we are very good at it in Yemen uh, not every country in the world we have a number of nuclear security specialists in Yemen we've been training these people for the last 10 years <laughs> one of the c concepts of nuclear security is the insider threat concept to deal with that's why nuclear security is not only fences and concrete and it's it's barriers physical barriers non-physical barriers like cameras, sensors, etc. Uh, uh, people who are uh, uh, either, the, the three kinds of people, there are the, the, the security, uh, uh, let's say, uh, reviewers, planners, and the security implementers, and the security implementers, two kinds. Yeah, you have the army, normal soldiers, people, and you have the security specialists, agents. Mm -hmm. okay? And we are very good at this now. We're, for this, we're ready. Okay. And you have then the rules and the regulations, the, the, the checklist you go after. You. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who co comes in, who doesn't, who has a tag to enter, who doesn't. Uh, and that is based on an internationally developed standard the IA has developed. And we're ready for this. When, when we come into the prospects of an actual implementation of, uh, and construction, let's say, of a plant, does, does the Commission already have sites, for example, that has presented in, proposed for such, uh, for such projects uh, anywhere here in the country? Yes. Uh, a few years ago, we have uh, uh, not allocated, uh, uh, sort of identified hmm. three sites all around the sea, two by the Red Sea and one by the Gulf of Aden. Mm -hmm. And the three sites have been studied also from the seismological point of view, from the environment, not environmental, from the weather, severe weather point of view, because you have to study the severe weather for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. You have to study the seismological activity for as many years as you could, mm -hmm. because, because that goes into the code of the buildings that you, you will build. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the, the, that MOU that we would sign with that small company, was supposed to cover the technical, environmental, financial aspect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the study. Mm -hmm. And we didn't. The, the, the MOE was not agreed to. The issue was gone. We're now slowly, hopefully, in, when the time is right, we will conduct these studies. But we have no plan right now for such studies. In, in the areas that you mentioned, uh, a primary issue for the oil industry, for example, and gas industry in, in recent years has been the problems with local tribes, meaning these refineries yeah. are within tribal territory. Therefore, the government not only has the challenge of, uh, of developing the, this infrastructure, these facilities, but it also has to deal with the local tribes, the local population, in order to negotiate the, the construction and the development of these facilities. What would be, do you foresee any such programs, let's say in 15, 20 years, if, Abs if Yemen engages this? Let me just tell you that our local tribes, I mean, people, they, they talk sometimes in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the, not in the right tone about these local tribes. These tribes, what they want? They want hospitals and schools, and that, they want legitimate things. So if I have a power plant near these plants, it's, it doesn't make sense. We have a very high technology power plant and, and the neighboring villages do not have electricity or no school. That doesn't make sense. So I am with the local tribes. As long as it's not their heads, the head of the tribes are the, the, the ones that need more than what the tribe wants. That's, the, the public, the people of the tribes, they need to live and they have legitimate right. Okay? But Sometimes, some heads of the tribes are, are uh, too greedy, so to speak. But that's as easy to do. Once you, you service the people of the tribe, the head of the tribe will be irrelevant. Okay, excellent. Uh, earlier you mentioned um, 
the need for regional cooperation in the development of such uh, infrastructure, for example. Right. Uh, we know that the, you mentioned the UAE is engaging uh, a program, an atomic energy program. We know for, that Yemen has many obstacles in order to access GCC uh, membership uh, in, the, in the near future. Um, this sector would mean that it's, it, it's of much interest to the entire region because the entire peninsula is suffering from, from energy, uh, from a lack of energy resources for domestic consumption. Um, do you foresee this particular issue as giving Yemen an advantage into joining the GCC, uh, making it easier for, for, for Yemen to join the GCC and benefit at the same time? I, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, uh, on one hand, the issue of Yemen joining the GCC is a process that's undergoing and actually is, is picking up speed. And I'm happy with that. On the other hand, whether the nuclear, uh, nuclear power activities in Yemen or in the GCC will help uh, uh, making Yemen join, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the activities in Yemen is, is, is uh, we have no activities, activities except building our infrastructure for safety and security because the other activities were killed mm -hmm. way back by the, the unacceptance of the MOU and by the uh, media frenzy of, uh, of certain type of media. Now, we are uh, not planning any real activities in nuclear power on the ground, except building our national infrastructure as far as nuclear safety and nuclear security. And we're very good at that, because that's our mandate. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the GCC, it varies. You have UAE, they are in the, in the, in the almost, the, they're about to start, you know, digging the ground, mm -hmm. because they have built the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, all of its employees are foreign nationals, and they have already contracted companies, they're working, I mean, they'll be the first to start, I think. They, you have like Egypt, Egypt is already conducting the studies, you have Jordan, the Jordan have signed uh, multiple agreements with the Chinese, Russian, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly, but the, at least with the Americans and, and the Canadians and so on. So, uh, uh, in, in, in GCC, the result is only uh, uh, Emirates is going very fast forward, very fast forward. The rest of the countries are slow on this. Any, any potential cooperation with the U direct co cooperation with the UAE in order to connect Yemen's grid to the UAE? It's possible, benefit? but we don't we, we have no any talks about that. It's possible, but I think with Saudi Arabia, it may much it makes much more sense to us. First of all, Saudi Arabia and us we have a study to connect the grids. Mm -hmm. Okay, already that exists, and and Saudi Arabia is interested to connect to us, and we're interested to connect to Saudi Arabia, and and the connection will happen. So in my opinion, a, a nuclear power between Yemen and Saudi Arabia is much, much, makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And I will be 100% for that. Okay. Well, Doctor, finally, one last question, and again, going back to your, to your book. Since you wrote the, the paper, and it was published this year, uh, taking the current situation in the energy sector, global energy sector, um, do, you, do you have any thoughts, second thoughts about your recommendations your, that, that you proposed in the paper? Any, anything that, that you see Yemen being able to more realistically engage in the short term in order to improve uh, its energy sector and, and contribute to, to, to the economic and social development in Yemen? I don't think so. Even the, the, every month passes by makes the situation even worse. I must submit to you and to the people who listen or watch or read this interview that uh, the, the need for energy strategy with a proper energy mix, particularly wind, nuclear and whatever available of gas, without that we will not survive and it's even worse every day. And I am, I, I have, uh, this paper I call it uh, in Arabic, Bara uh, al means I'm trying to make my conscious clear. Mm -hmm. It's a conscious clearing paper for history's sake. Whether the, the decision makers go forward or not, history will judge them, not me. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Bahran. Thank you for, for hosting us today. Thank you. For, I know that for sure our audience would definitely find this, this interview uh, of interest and very informative. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahasalaam.